We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Williamsburg, Kentucky, and we get to visit with the head coach for the Cumberland's Patriots, Coach Shan Housekeeper, heading into his third season in the program. Uh, coach, I want to ask about that to get started. Five and five in year one, six and four in year two. When you look at the growth of the program, what do you see there? Is there an area that stands out to you? Because there, there is obviously, at least numerically and statistically, progress. Yeah, you know that's what we got to see. We're we're a big program on on progressively improving, and and I feel like we're really starting to be able to set in what we want, uh, the culture that we want, and and I'll tell you, the guys that came before me as a head coach did a phenomenal job, and it's a great program, and 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 they left a, a great opportunity. But for us, it feels like <clears throat> when you get to year three, you really are starting to to really get your imprint in there, and your standards and your expectations and and the day-to-day operations and how practice runs in the weight room and the kids, you know, and, and, and I feel like this is a, you know, we're finally starting to get there. And, and with football, it's a, it can be a long, a long progression. And, and one of the things that we want to do is I think there's a difference between building a team and building a program. And I, I want us to build a program and a program means it's going to be sustainable and produce sustainable results. And I've been very fortunate to have, that model before me working for a Hall of Fame coach, Bill Cronin, he showed, uh, you know, what it takes to build a very sustainable program. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to we want to shape kids and, and put them in a position to succeed for a lifetime when they uh, graduate from the Cumberland. Coach, when you, you mentioned the word uh, have your have an imprint on the program. And that is something that, you know, it takes a little bit. It's, it's not something that happens overnight. I would imagine in, in year four especially, but I would think by year three, which is where you are, spring practices are, are now more of a routine in uh, the way that you want to see things done. How did the spring go for you all? I thought spring was outstanding. I think our kids are, are really understanding expectations. You know, it actually begins before that. Us, for us, it begins in the weight room. And we had a 10-week lifting cycle. And that weight room is it, it holds so much value for us and the standards and the and the expectations and the effort that we want to develop and build, and so we really test our kids in there because uh, you know we want to we want to we want to see what we got and and they they responded extremely well, and then that momentum carried out to spring and what, what we're able to do in the spring was really start to to you know, identify the guys that needed to step up or the guys that really we we saw in the weight room that were starting to make some progressions. And then, you know, being able to have a spring and go through the spring and be able to maximize every practice, to be honest with you, and, and utilize each day, it was it was very beneficial. Now, you know, we're, the, we're in the, the summer phase where our guys are, are training and lifting and, and, and learning how to connect from a distance. You know, those long distance relationships are going on. And I feel good about that too. So, I, I thought the spring was very beneficial. I thought we had a lot of guys that grew a ton through the spring. And we had some older guys that were able to really help develop some of these younger guys. And that's and that's what our program's all about. Coach, did you you need to have some people step up? I, I want to get to the offensive side of the ball and, and start to preview just a bit. But, uh, you know, their quarterback from last season, a couple of mm-hmm. leading running backs from last season gone now. And, and uh, I think – Nick Bazell is the name that comes to mind. I know the offensive line is very important, but did you need to have some people step up like that? We did. I'll tell you, Nick is, and it starts up front with us, and it starts with our offensive line and our our tight ends and our H's and our run and our fullbacks and those. What a, what a great group of young men we have there. Nick is is a guy that is a 4.0 student. He is a highly successful in the classroom in the community he does all kinds of great stuff and he's a guy that you can just count on every single day he's on our leadership council he's he's got he's a voice for reason so to have guys like that but he's also got over 30 starts in his career and so our interior offensive line is is really veteran uh micah gibson and, and braylon smith those those guys are 30 plus starters uh, over a career so far uh, and then you, as our tight end works out, Curtis LaFleur is a guy that was an all-commerce tight end for us, and he's a guy that makes a big impact. Um, but obviously we got to be able to have some some new skill guys step up. It always begins in the quarterback position. I feel like we we had a quarterback that had a great spring, uh, was was with us last year as a true freshman, and I think we got a couple more freshman quarterbacks coming in that can can really be dynamic. So obviously as at, at, at any level of football, that quarterback position is, is vital. And if we can get some uh, some really good 
quarterback play, then I feel like, uh, you know, we'll be able to start doing some of the things we want to be able to do offensively. And, and uh, you know, it's going to start with those guys up front and the leadership that they have. I feel like, you know, they continue to grow and develop. And Coach Orban is a run game coordinator, offensive line coach, and he does a, an incredible job. And then Coach Moore is their offensive coordinator, and and he's he's got a, he's he's a really really sharp guy and understands. And, and those two guys together with Coach Beach who's our wide receiver guy, and uh, they do a great job. And uh, and it's exciting to see the growth because now we've really got a couple years on in in on the, the offensive system, and uh, and now they the kids are really starting to fully understand it. We're speaking now with Shan Housekeeper from the University of the Cumberlands here on The Summit, previewing the 2024 college football season. And I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel here, Midwest Sports Net. It really does mean a lot. We appreciate that. Uh, you, you talk about the offense. On the defensive side of the ball, you do have a couple of seniors coming back there, especially from that linebacker spot. Walker Dunn coming back, as well as Adam Cottle. Yeah. You talk about two first-class kids. Those are those are some awesome guys. Got a lot of reps, a lot of, a lot of starts. Both of them are all conference players, guys that you can just count on, guys that I would hire. You know, those are the type of guys that you want in your program and guys that I would recommend uh, to anybody. And and those two guys, I've been, have been fortunate to, to work with those guys over the last couple of years and and the growth that they've been able to make and, and, and the leadership that they display is, is exciting to see. Uh, the only thing I don't like is they're seniors. You know, I want to be able to have three or four more years with them. But they've grown a tremendous amount since we've shown up and they've been a big part of of help push and, and develop, uh, you know, the culture and expectations here. And and they make a big impact on the field. Walker Dunn is a guy that prepares as hard off the field as any player I've been around. He's a, a true passionate about his preparation, and, and that's infectious to the other guys in the room, but also on defense. Um, you know, we've got a guy that's coming back as another offense, uh, another defensive guy that's that's made a lot of plays for us, Damon Burns Mitchell. A guy that's a big hitter and 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 again a great leader, and he cares. And then our outs as you move outside, uh, Malik Thornton's a guy that's been a was a was the rookie of the year his freshman year has continued to make big big impactful plays, um, and he's another guy that's you know phenomenal off the field, great student, and and a great leader. And kids really respond to him. So, you know, we've got a lot of good kids here at the Cumberlands, and a lot of guys that are we're excited about. And I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to, uh, to have the kids we have in our program. One more area of the game, and you have somebody coming back in this spot that I'm sure you appreciate having, Joe Matosin, coming back, uh, second team All-American as well. And, and uh, that's a, a place uh, that you have to have some solid play, especially at key points in the game as your kicker. Yeah. You know, and it, it starts with our snapper with Trevor Feaster. He's a guy that was an all-conference snapper for us last year and a guy that super dependable and, and and he's a guy that wants to coach down the road and he's you know so that means he it means a lot to him uh, but Job is he's special he's a he's a guy that was an all-american for us and got a lot of trust in Job. you know he's he's a, he's actually a really good athlete all the way around uh, but he's obviously a phenomenal punter and kicker but off the field he's exceptional as well and that's that's a big deal for us here at the Cumberlands and you know he's on a mission trip in Mexico right now you know because he wants to serve people and um, but you know he's he's a guy that that you I, I I rely on him to kind of tell me what he's feeling at that time and we spend a lot of time on special teams you know I think that that's a it's an, an important area for us and we invest in there and we want to make sure that we're well prepared uh, because you know we've all been a part and if you've been in this game you've all been a part of of good and bad special teams and uh, and you can learn some tough lessons and uh, so we 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 have great kids there and. And then the, the coverage kids and the units, uh, they take a lot of pride, and our coaches do a great job of preparing on our special teams. And and uh, and so I'm excited about, uh, you know, what we can do in the kicking game and, and the impact that we can make. Coach, I, I want to stay there just for a second because I, I appreciate what you've said throughout the course of our conversation today. And you, know, you talk about wanting to build a program and, and building in the lives of these kids. You know, I'm, I'm hearing about – Kids that already, you know, they they know they want to be coaches, yeah. uh, you know, on on mission trips right now here in the middle of the summer. I mean, that's a big deal that it's you're talking about kids, as as you talked about, uh, that uh, are solid athletes, uh, quality, I, I would imagine the classroom, but, uh, you know, quality of character, too. Oh, it's it's a big part for us here at the Cumberlands. And we get in, we were involved in a couple different, uh, you know, mentorship groups here in the community. We've 
we have a relationship with with a local school system just off campus here and and we actually had 40 plus students come to a, a practice in the spring to be able to to interact with our guys and we played a little bit of uh, kickball with them and, and ran a little bit of obstacle course with them and and our kids go over there at least once a week um, to to invest in those kids I'll go over there because I'm you know in the community and I'll go over there and and unscripted I'll see our guys in the cafeteria at the local uh, middle schools and high schools and just just hanging out with the kids um, you know we're getting involved with the juvenile system here uh, because we want to make sure that that you know, we spend a lot of time developing our young men uh, to be better uh, in in life, and and it's their job to then go out and multiply that. Uh, for us, it's important to to make sure that that when we send these guys out, they're a better version than when they showed up. And we get great kids when they show up, but it's our obligation to uh, to continue to invest in them and develop them and and help them see um, how how fulfilling it is to invest in in, in helping other people. A lot of great things, it sounds like, going on off the field as well there. But you know what? You're going to be on the field right at three months from now, Saturday, September 7th, on the road at Bluefield. And then the following weekend, first home game, taking on Pikeville on the 14th. And you have to wait till October, but a tough Mid-South Conference schedule begins right there, and, and you get to go to Bethel to get things going. Talk about the opening to your season. Yeah, I think we've got a, I think we've got a, a very competitive schedule. Uh, there's no easy games in our in our league, and then when we cross over and, and play some some out of um, conference games, we're playing the best teams in the in the opposing conferences. Uh, we've uh, you know, but obviously we want to be the best, and and you you can't get there by by going through easy competition. We want to test ourselves. Um, it's going to start with Coach Lusk and 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 Bluefield on the road, and he's a he's a tremendous coach and has been in the game a long time. And I got a lot of respect for him. He does a great job and. It's going to be hard to, to start on the road with them, but I, you know, I think our guys will be prepared for that test. And then, you know, we're on the road. And we come home and we're we're at, at Pike with Pikeville University of Pikeville, and I think those guys do a great job. And Coach Phipps has got a lot of respect for him and and what he does. And then we go down the road to to Reinhardt, and they're a perennial playoff team, and and we got to go and find a way. And then we we come back home and 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 have a, a, a an in state just down the road rival. So that's the that's the out of conference, and then, you know, when you get in conference, you you know you got three teams that were in the top ten in the country last year, uh, just in our conference. So I feel like we have a, a very very strong conference. I feel like, you know, we have to be very prepared, and our kids are are starting to understand how much, um, it, you know, in January affects when we get into November, and when when you when you when those kids are understanding the value of January. The, the value of February, and then when we get um, deep into October, November, then you know that stuff really starts to pay out, and that's what we're trying to trying to to build. And uh, you know, it's a long process, and it's a tough process, but but we thoroughly enjoy the process. Well, coach, it it really the the appearance is that the program and the process is working and that things are going well there in Williamsburg. So success to you all this year. We're going to continue to follow the Patriots over the course of the 2024 season. And we're very thankful for the time. Coach Shannon Housekeeper from University of the Cumberlands, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. I appreciate your time, and uh, I look forward to uh, look forward to the fall. 